Hello, uh, this is the second part of our process to build the user authorization or login wall to our open source application. Uh, in the previous part, we saw PSR auto loading, controllers, environment variables, middleware, and a basic PHP connection uh, example. So, in this uh, video, we'll go over uh, route groups, logs, dependency injection container, SWOL table, and all of these with the goal of identifying users. So by identifying users, I mean that we will be able to identify that a specific request comes from a browser and we will be able to differentiate when further requests come from the same browser or from another browser. So let's go to that. First of all, uh, if we take a look in our composer JSON, we'll, be, we'll see that I added a few packages here for us. One is UID for our unique identifiers, so we can identify our users. Another package is simple cache, which is going to be the interface that we'll use on top of SWOL table, so we can uh, persist stuff in our ephemer ephemeral storage, which is SWOL table. Carbon for us to deal with dates. Show cookies, which is a package that I created to facilitate the usage of cookies. Monolog for our logs and debugging. Slim bridge, which is a bridge between Slim and the dependency injection container called PHPDI. That's all we added. And let's begin by coming here in the index file and adding a few things. So first of all, I'm going to add the, the dependency injection container to, to the Slim app con constructor, uh, which is the second uh, parameter. So here it is, I'm adding the DI container. And once we have the DI container, I can grab this container instance by getting like this. Okay, now I have the, the, the dependency injection container in a variable and there I'm going to add my log so I can access the log wherever I have the container available for me. And to do that, I'm going to add container, set, I'm going to give a name to this item inside the dependency injection container and I'm going to put a callback where I build the instance. So to build that instance, I, I'm going to add something like this and I'm going to invoke the namespaces. You can, you can see that I'm now bringing all the namespaces here automatically. And now I have my logger instance uh, getting injected into container. So you might notice that I, I'm logging everything. First of all, I'm logging everything from the bug up. So I'm logging everything. And also I uh, using a new environment variable, so let's add it there. Uh, oh, actually, it's already there. So I, I, all my logs are going to a file located in the logs directory in the app log. Uh, please notice that this is a rel relative directory. I'm uh, putting a full path directory here. So I'm just completing when I'm creating the stream handler for the logger, okay? So now we have the logger instance. And uh, now let's add, uh, let's group this. So right now our routes, they are not very standardized. So to make this more resourceful, let's, let's make both the same. And when there is an ID, it does one thing. And when there is no known ID, does something else. So here we have uh, something that might be able to be handled the same way. So for that, we can do something like this. Uh, everything inside users, I'm going to put inside this group, okay? So this is route collector proxy, which is the instance that they give you in the callback when you call this way in, in this group method on Slim app. So let's invoke the dependency and this is going to be all these get methods, all the, the route methods are going to be called on the group now. 
and because this is already inside users i can do like this and this other here i can do like this to be more to all, all, already identify if this is an integer or not we can enhance in this manner so now we are accepting only integers integers here and this is going already there okay so this sh here should work just the same so if we go and execute our application go there that just the same nothing changed up to this point so now what we are going to do is we are going to log whenever i have i reach that route just to see that my logs are working so if i go there oh first of all i have to put the container in on my controller so now that i have the dependency injection container i can call this way public oh actually uh, i already have this ready to facilitate to us in a php uh, manner so this here is happening because my ide is not in the php8 so if i just do this apply there it is so now just this dependency is not matched i just added here and now everything works this here is the same this is PHP 8 is the same as doing something like uh, is the same as doing something like this. Uh, is the same as doing something like this. Okay, so this is just the short manner of doing this. So, okay, now that we have this container available in the class, what I'm going to do is I'm going to call this get logger and, and add the info saying I'm here. Okay, so now when I run, I'm going to split this and I'm going to make the directory logs and touch logs app.log .log. okay so now if i deal that file when i access this i see i'm here okay now our logs are working as expected so with this in hand what i'm going to do is i'm going to add uh, a way for us to uh, identify uh, actually I'm going to yeah i'm going to add a way for us to identify the user connection so for that i'm going to create a service for us to cache this information and i'm also going to be creating another middleware where i add a session to the request and the response okay so you can uh dig further those services and middleware in a later moment here i'm just going to show how to how to implement and basic information about it so first of all i'm going to uh, create a directory called services and inside services i'm going to create first uh, our cache wrapper for the swall table so let's go there I'm going to call it uh, session table. Okay, so now I have it there, and I already have some code implementing that interface. And the interface in question is the cache interface. So you can dig further that in a later moment. Cache interface, simple cache, exactly that. So now uh you can see that there are no big concerns here maybe this one here date interval probably because this class is not imported okay no further errors here okay so now uh, i'm going to add uh, and basically what it does is it it oh import this so table this is so table and there are more items here to be imported carbon so once i finish yeah, okay finished so this is basically an uh, a cache interface for us to 
to deal with set, uh, swole table. So what it's doing is when, uh, when we use this class, uh, when we get a new instance, we're actually creating a new instance and in the, con the constructor, constructor of this class creates the table if, if it's not there yet, right? And we have data and time to leave. So I'm putting a time to leave as eight hours, basically. For, so every, everything we add here is going to be expired in, and deleted in eight hours. So basically, uh, this is an interface for us to interact with swall table, just that. And now I'm going to add another class called that I'm going to call section, session, which is the class that is actually going to be the implementation that is going to add the session information into the request and the response. So I already have some code ready for that here. And if we open the, the, the outline here, we have basically start session, which uh, cre uh, gra grabs the session from the current request object. So this request object, uh, the, the goal is to have these uses here, okay? So I, I grab the session from the current request object. Uh, I add cookies to a response from the request. This is what I'm doing here. And all the rest are private methods to make those two procedures possible, which is basically encoding and decoding from for, for a session. And here you can see that I added another environment variable and let's add it there. So here, just add the random key here. So this is just a matter of making it more difficult for uh, someone to decrypt whatever you're doing here, which, because we are not actually protecting this very much, as you can see. But by adding a key, we make it a little more difficult for someone to understand what we have in place here. So that's all we are doing. So if we go back to, the, to our files, now that we have both, uh, we, we, are, we are good to start our what I call session middleware. The session middleware is going to be the middleware. Middleware is going to be the middleware where we add the, the session to the, the request and the response. So let's add it there. It's basically an invoke and the dependencies are right here. So basically what we're doing is we are starting a session in the request and putting inside a property that we're adding it there called session. And then the process, the, the system do its thing and, and give us the response. And then we put the cookies that we have in the request in the response and give the response back. That's basically what's happening here. And now we are ready to add that middleware to our group. So every request in the whole group is going to create what we call session. So oh, uh, we didn't want to do this here. We want to restart the application. So just for, uh, for us to be able to see what's happening. If we go here, I'm going to delete this and I'm going to refresh. You see that there is a cookie now. We have a cookie now, my code session. So this cookie is what identifies what's happening here. So just let's let's delete and add and modify our uh, log uh, real quick so we can check uh, what's happening there. So basically what, what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to uh, log the session from the request and I'm going to JSON encode just to make it a string for our log. Otherwise it will cause an error. Okay, so let's see what's our cache. So once we 
See, now I have a cookie and the cookie is an identification. So if we call the same endpoint, let's just copy that endpoint in the other browser, in our other session, it's a different ID. If I refresh here, it's the same ID, always gives the same ID. And this here gives that other ID, see? So each browser, each connection always have the same because of the cookie. So now we are identifying users in our application. So let's stop here and continue in the next video. Uh, let me know in the, in the comments if you have further questions about this procedure, okay? Thank you.